be able to introduce our president of the Northwest of us, Mr. Dave Ginsburg. You can see his bright smiling face there. He has uh, been a longtime computer consultant and really has a gift for uh, iPhones and, and iPads and uh, much of computer technology that he shares with us. His SIG that he provides for us that meets once a month through the Northwest of us is just a really popular SIG and is usually jam packed every month. So if you have not had a chance to attend the SIG, please uh, you know sign up, attend, watch for our emails on the website and uh, sign up for attending his SIG. So without any further uh, conversation, I'd like to introduce Dave Ginsburg and our iPhone webinar for this morning. Dave. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Roger. Appreciate the nice uh, introduction. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go over the agenda for today and uh, explain what I, I hope to accomplish uh, through this webinar. We'll be at about approximately one and a half hours, um, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll continue on here. This is what the agenda for today is going to be. Uh, we're going to discuss the basics about the home screen, billiard apps, app folders, and more. Um, the audience is kind of new. Some are folks are new to the iPhone. Some folks uh, are, are masters at it. But you might pick something up for those of you who have, uh, have seen a lot of this stuff uh, before. Um, I will do a brief review of the built-in apps and briefly review the status bar. And this, this, this is really going to be a tips extravaganza. Got a lot of great secret tips, a lot of tips that uh, you may not be aware of. Uh, we're going to go through a lot of those uh, things uh, uh, as well. First off, I wanted to do is I wanted to do a poll. I wanted to know, uh, again, we're going to be focusing most uh, on, on just the iPhone. But I'd like to understand uh, what iPhone everybody has. So I'm going to shoot out this poll here, and I'd like you to answer which iPhone do you have. Go ahead and uh, do that. I'll let that go for a minute. Everybody got submitting here. I got a few people have older iPhones. Wow. I'll leave that open for another couple seconds. Okay. So it looks like we have uh, quite a few folks that have the 5S, uh, 47%. 18% have the 5C, 24% of you have the 4S. There's still a few of you have the iPhone 4 and it uh, looks like a few older ones as well. Uh, so uh, that was good, some good information. Uh, appreciate you uh, doing that poll. So let's get started. Let me close this out here. So I'll minimize this real quick here. And do a little bit of housekeeping when you bear with me here. I'm going to bring up the iPhone and we'll start doing some uh, demonstrations here. All right, brought the phone up. I think everybody can see it. And yeah, let's get started. Um, first off, I wanted to talk um, mostly about uh, some of the built in apps. Actually, I was going to use this chart here. Um, Everybody could see that this is the built-in apps. Hang on here. These are all the built-in apps that the iPhone has currently, um, and many of you may not know that, that these are that are actually available to you. Uh, we, of course, we know about text messages. We know about the calendar, the, fo the photos, the camera, the weather, the clock, um, maps, videos. All these apps that I that you see on this screenshot are actually um, applications that are built into the phone and I'm not going to go over them with, with great detail I uh, will touch on a few of them but I just want to kind of give you an understanding of what those particular apps are and we'll go over some of those as well um, okay let's go back into full screen mode here so it makes it a little easier to see all right so I wanted to talk a little bit about the home screen basics, how to delete your apps, how to go through and and make changes and things like that, and uh, have, give you a good understanding as far as how to uh, set these uh, things up here. 
Now, as far as applications go, as you see on my screen here, I have, I have quite a few apps here. Now, when you when you install an app, basically what happens is you have a icon that, that allows you to be able to grab it just by tapping and holding on to it. And what it does is it causes the icons to wiggle. Uh, what this will do is allow you to be able to reorganize this. But maybe I want to actually go through and group these. Well, there is such a thing called grouping. So what I do is if I tap on one of these icons and I drag over on top of it, what's going to happen is it's going to create a group. Now, it, it saw that these two um, apps are uh, related to news. So it automatically knew that group, so it automatically named it that. So you actually can tap that if you want to right at the very top here, um, uh, which is right here, and it will actually allow you to change it if you wanted to. But we'll keep this named news. If you click done and tap outside the window, as you see it, it created and then create and then tap the home button, it now created a new group. Now if you decide you want to add some more, you got to do it the same way. You, you tap and hold on to the icon until they wiggle. And then I want to maybe let's say I want to drag this one into a group. So now it it uh, created a group and then do the same thing. Let's repeat that so you can see it again. So I'll actually create a, uh, another group here. Um, I'm watching uh, Siri here, sorry. Again, tap and hold the the uh, icon, and then you drag it over to the other icon that you want to group it. Again, you saw these two were classified as games. It knew that right away. Happy with that. You tap it, and away you go. It allows you to actually um, make that into groups. Uh, that's the and that's basically what it is as far as making groups. And as you see, the way I have things organized, I have quite a few apps here. You can just go through and grab whatever these icons you want, and it, it gives you the opportunity to, to, to actually look at uh, each one of these and pick an actual app that you want to uh, to launch. Now, let's say you wanted you wanted to delete something and you wanted to delete an icon. Um, the way you do that is you tap and hold on the icon, and let's say I want to delete this. You see the little X there. I tap that X, and it's going to say like this particular app I want to delete. I say delete, and then what happens is it disappears. Now, you'll know if an app is not able to be deleted in the case of, let's say, the built-in apps. If I click and hold them, they'll wiggle, but you, see, you notice that they don't have an X on them. That means that these are not apps that you can actually delete from um, the phone. Um, and, and that's pretty much as far as that goes as relates to uh, uh, doing, the, doing the, uh, the deleting of apps and actually moving them uh, across here. Uh, what next thing I wanted to talk about was the actual uh, control center and the way you get to this control center is by dragging up and this gives you some, this actually gives you some actual controls of some of the items that are that are hidden in iOS 7 uh, as you notice here it has uh, Wi-Fi you could turn that on and off I don't want to do that because I'll lose connection here but uh, the middle one here is Bluetooth. I can tap that and turn Bluetooth on and off. Um, I also can uh, turn on the Do Not Disturb, which I'm going to talk about a little bit in, later. If I wanted to not be disturbed, I can turn that on and off from on the fly here. Um, I'm also able to turn on and off the orientation. What that is is it allows you to be able to lock the phone. And uh, so when you're moving it from side to side, you can see on my camera here, if you move from side to side like this, it won't move. If you turn it off, it'll be back on. The brightness, which is the bar right here, you see that you won't see it actually going dim or bright on your screen, but uh, it, it is gives you the opportunity to, to turn the brightness down, and that sometimes uh, helps for battery life. Um, also below that is below here is the actual control of any music type app, so you have it right from the screen here. You can bring it up and actually cl click play forward, reverse, whenever you're playing any music. Uh, that gives you the access to that. And actually, let me let let me bring up uh, music real quick here and uh, let me show you. So if you bring up a song here and you want to be able to listen to it, um, so we pick a song and we can play it. So if I bring it up, 
again, here's the control center. Notice now it has the name of the song here in the middle, as well as it allows me to control it. I can stop it, start it. I can adjust the volume here, up and down. It gives full control of, of any music app. So not only is it just your iTunes music, it can be any, any app that has the music uh, related to it. You know, let's say you're listening to uh, a video, or if you're any types of apps that re have sound, you have control of it from this uh, uh, from this window. Now below below this here, this this is called AirDrop. Now what AirDrop is is allows people who have 5S, if you're in the same room, if you're in the same, I'm not same room, but if you're on the same network, allows you to be able to copy files from one to another. Like you can send contacts, you can send photos. I won't get too deep to that, but that that access is for, is available from here. And then the last set of controls here, here are uh, the flashlight. You can turn it on or off. Uh, the clock, quick access to the app, to, to the clock app right from there. Um, the calculator, I'm trying to show a tip on here in, of a little bit here of, on how to use this calculator. Of course, when you turn the phone this way, it, it changes it to the degree function. And when you turn it back, it's the uh, uh, regular calculator function. And then I just tapped the home button, brought back this up here. And then you have quick access to the camera, so you can take a picture of the cam take a picture right from there, and take the picture. You can bring it back up just by tapping the home button and dragging up uh, the phone. So that that basically is the, all the controls that you have access to right from uh, Control Center. Uh, it's pretty nifty. I think it's a, a, a great place to, to access a lot of uh, great stuff. Um, if you drag from the top, of, uh, the very top of the menu here, this is called the the uh, notification center. And let me do that again. And this is I, you take your finger and you drag it right from the top here. And once you do that, it brings you down the, the actual notification center. And this breaks down all kinds of things now you can speci specify just by tapping here's today so this shows a calendar so the calendar of course incorporates the weather um, you can click all and this shows some of the things that will end up in the notification center like uh, I've noticed here I've got my calendar a phone call that was missed uh, I uh, actually follow sports center and ESPN that shows in here any app that you uh, utilizes the notification center will will appear in here uh, one thing you can do in here, if there are things you don't want to see anymore, you can clear it out. You notice this one here says News Digest. This is a Yahoo app I, I use to read the news. All I have to do is click this little X here and click Clear, and it clears it out. This is a great feature to have when you uh, uh, want to be able to clear things out of here. Uh, same thing with the App Store. If I want to clear this, I can clear this out as well. So good place to see things of what's going on uh, on your phone for notifications um, if there's anything you missed you can tap this button up here at the very top and it actually groups everything that you had missed um, including any, any notifications phones phone calls um, notifications from particular apps any of those kind of things is, are in there as well uh, so uh, that's the notification center and to bring it back up if you see this little arrow right here you grab it up and, and there it goes. Another thing that I, I think is important is uh, is the spotlight feature. Spotlight is a, is a feature that allows you to be able to search for anything on the phone. And the way to get to that is you take your finger, usually I use a thumb, and grab it right in the middle of the screen here, and then just drop it down. And what I what it does is it brings down the search bar. And you notice here I, I, I had something that I'd search in here before. So if I type in the word music, let's say. What, uh, what Spotlight Search is going to do is search anything that relates to that particular word. And notice it brings top hits for apps, for, app, um, for uh, applications, I should say, and uh, music. Uh, lots of music, obviously, because I use the word music. Um, let's use something. Now I can scroll through this. Um, it'll also look at your videos, your mail. If the word uh, music appears anywhere in your mail, it, it searches through here as well. And the cool thing is too is you can if there's something you want to grab you just tap it and it'll bring you right to that email message right from um, right from that control panel as far as uh, the search goes. To get back to it, just single tap the home button, take your finger again. The way I get to it is you grab any empty spot on the screen here and just drag it down. 
it, and now it, it gives you the opportunity to look through and you can, you can do another search. Let's call, let's do another search here. So you just type in a word and it brings up anything that relates to that particular word, especially in uh, email too, which is kind of neat. And you can search an email too, which I will talk about in a bit. Okay. Um, those are two, two of the uh, big things that uh, are part of uh, managing the phone. Uh, we talked about the control center and we talked about the notification center. Um, let's also talk about multitasking. Now, what happens is when you have uh, when you have a phone that actually uh, when you have applications that are running in the background, the way you get to them is by double tapping this home button right here at the bottom. So I double tap, and what you see is you see all the apps that are open uh, in the uh, in the background right now, uh, and if there's any apps that I wanted to take out of here, all I have to do is I, I take my finger here and drag up. And what it does is, and I can keep doing this, and what it does is it closes out all these applications um, as I go here. But it's showing you every single application that's opened up right now. Um, so it makes it very easy to be able to actually multitask as well as, as taking apps out of here. Um, so let's say I, I want to go back to music. I tap it here. If I double tap the home button again, I want to go to my mail. I can tap here. So it gives you a real simple way to get to the apps very quickly just by tapping. Um, so the, it, it, it's a pretty uh, slick way of getting into these things. I'm going to show you some tricks uh, as far as how to uh, remove a lot of these apps and, and go through a lot of them uh, in a little bit here. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay. I. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go and come back to the preview here. And I had an image here I want to bring up. Let's see if it's still there. Yeah, here we go. Um, if everybody can see that, I'm going to make this bigger and I put it right next to the phone so you can see it. This is what's called the status bar. And the status bar is, if you could see where my cursor is, is the very top part of this. Um, of this bar and what this bar does is it gives you a lot of information as far as what's going on with the, with the phone the time if uh, what, you know if airplay is running what your battery life is all that stuff here is and this chart kind of gives you a good breakdown to what this is so the first one here on the uh, on the list here is cell signal as you see here I have only three dots so I'm not getting I'm getting okay signal here which is okay with, by me uh, below that is the Wi-Fi signal which is right next to the uh, the carrier, of course, I uh, I have AT&T. You, some of you may have Sprint, some of you may have um, Verizon or other carriers. That that's where it's going to tell you where your carrier is. Now, airplane mode. What airplane mode is? It allows you to uh, put the phone off, but be able to use it while you're on an airplane. Or if you want to just not be online and just turn it turn it off, you can uh, set that as well. Uh, this icon here will actually appear right around here uh, when it, when it's syncing. If anything is syncing, that will appear right uh, in this uh, box here. Um, the alarm, if you have your alarm set, and actually I'll, um, I think we just had the clock open, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. If I want to go ahead and set an alarm, I've got two alarms already preset. If I turn it on, and then you notice now this icon shows up here telling me that the, um, that there's a uh, icon that tells me that the, the alarm clock is enabled. Um, okay, and below this is an icon called Personal Hotspot, and what that is is if if you most of you would have the service called Personal Hotspot, and if I were to turn that on, um, this actually allows me to use the phone as a hotspot so other so other devices can connect to it. So once it connects, it's going to show this icon that it's that it's connected with uh, Personal Hotspot. Uh, this arrow here will actually show up right around this region here. That's called location services. It'll tell you anytime you're opening an app it, that you've you've accessed the location services uh, area, and um, it's it's constantly looking for different uh, things depending on the app. Of course, we looked at this icon earlier. This this tells you when the portation uh, the portrait or orientation lock is on, and you got Bluetooth, Do Not Disturb, Battery, all those will appear up here in the status bar uh, whenever they're enabled. Call forwarding, if you have your phone forwarded to another number, that would show up here. 
Uh, TTYs for some for, for hard of hearing. If you're using that service, that would be here. Uh, any of these icons here, of course, you're not seeing it right now because I have the Wi-Fi enabled. You, you'll see these icons uh, uh, on. You always want to see LTE because that's the best network available for the phone. If you don't, uh, if it, if the signal starts to drop, you may go drop down to 4G, and in some cases you may go to 3G or even the edge network. Um, and those actual um, uh, settings are probably because you're in a really bad area that doesn't have really good cell coverage um, as far as uh, as far as that goes uh, and basically that is the uh, the settings as far as the status bar goes all right I went through a lot of basics you know what I'm gonna do is I want to uh, Roger I want to open up uh, for a few questions I see a few have come through and if you have anybody else that, that had a question let's go ahead and go through those uh, at the moment Okay, uh, we have a question from uh, Mary Ann, at which uh, she is asking, how do you set up notifications to show? Notifications as far as? Uh, I think she's asking, I think her question is, uh, how to set notifications to show up Oh, notifications is, I guess we'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to elaborate on that. Maybe is she answering, asking again? Yeah, Marianne, why don't you uh, elaborate on that a little bit and ask your question again. Let me go on to another question. Do we have any, do we have any audio calls, audio questions? Uh, we do, we do. We have one from uh, Susan, I believe. All right. But I'm, unmute you, Susan, and uh, you can ask your question. Okay, well, I typed it in so you can get rid of it. Going back to when you did mail, I had two questions. Going back to when you did mail, can I limit a mail search to just the sender? Um, I don't think so. If you, if when you go into a, like I'm in mail now. Um, let me go into uh, over here. When you type in a search, when you, when you type in where I think it might would show up here, I'm not certain that you can limit it right from the search. This this is the actual mail search. Yeah. That's when I'm typing in the word Google. Well, it actually brings up Google because Google Play had actually sent something to me. And it's whenever and you it search, finds it in the message too, I see. Right. Notice when I typed in Google, it also shows the from icon there. Uh -huh. that, that means it, 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 it found that particular word. So if you type someone's name in, then yes, it would. It, it, but it wouldn't limit it to that. I mean, if people were CCing each other back and forth, Right. So I had a huge number of messages and I just wanted the one from the app. I can't do that. No, that, okay. there's no limitation on that, yep. And before we leave the status bar thing, you've got one symbol in your status bar that I don't see on the list. It's the one between the timer and the percent sign, a sort of a oh, rectangle. Sorry, with yeah. a... It didn't bring it up on it. This is called AirPlay. So right now, because oh. I'm showing you my screen, this is, this is the actual AirPlay uh, icon. Um, okay, thank you. That's turned on when uh, when you're sharing something, whether you connect to an Apple TV or or anything else or using AirPlay. Okay, I'll ask the rest of my questions when you get to that topic. All right, great. Okay, I just wanted to keep a little flow going because I want I want everybody to have to sit to wait and wait to get their questions answered. Let me go ahead and move on. I'm going to start uh, talking about some of the tips and tricks that we've talked about, that I had on uh, the agenda for today. Um, these are going to become some of the secret tips. Um, and one of them I had found, I'm going to turn up my brightness here so I can see. Um, one of them I found was uh, making your iPhone vibrate however you want it to vibrate. And this demonstration might be a little tough, but I'm going to give it a college try here because it would be hard to he actually hear or see a, a vibration. Um, let me go back to full screen here so we uh, get a nice good focus on the phone. All right, so in the settings, under uh, under sounds, I'm going to go back to settings, and I was in general, I'm going to go settings, and then sound. Um, you have this, the vibrate. Now, people, a lot of people obviously like to be able to vibrate uh, their phone when, when, you know, when they're in a place that they can't have the ringer on and all that. Um, you got to make sure that's turned on when you use this. So what I'm going to do is, again, let me repeat that so everybody sees it. Uh, I'm going to go back into the settings. Uh, area and into, into uh, sounds. And what I want to do is I want to go into ringtone. Now, of course, everybody has their default ringtone. Lost a connection here. 
So it looks like it uh, doesn't like that. So I may not be able to demonstrate this, but we'll try. Um, okay, so it's back. Uh, let's go back to ringtone. At the very bottom here, oh, you tap vibrate. So now, now vibrate has an alert, a default alert. That looks like it is going to work. Good. And it's got a bunch of different uh, uh, um, vibrates. Like this one's heartbeat. Again, I can't demonstrate it because it, 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 well, trust me when I say it, you can hear it going da, 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 da. and it's got lots of different ones. Well, what you can do, can do is actually, if you want to create your own type of, of vibration, see at the very bottom here, uh, it's called create Vib new vibration. Um, this actually gives you the opportunity to create your own vibration, believe it or not. So what I can do is I can actually tap and then scroll, tap, 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 whatever I want to do as far as the type of vibration I want to use. And you keep doing it until it fills the bar here. And you play it to feel if you like it. It's just like recording a, a voice or anything like that. And you notice, you see it on the screen, every time the vibrate hits, it, it's, uh, it's doing a vibrate. So then what I can do is save it. And I'll just save this at test vibrate. Click save. So now, instead of me setting the default vibrate, I can use one of the test ones here. And it's going to do with exactly, you may hear it. I think I see the sound coming up. Uh, and now you have your own custom vibration, believe it or not, and not a ringtone. So, but what it'll do is uh, it'll vibrate and go along with the ringtone if you have it set that way. So that was what the settings here at the very top, uh, very top here. Like if you want it to vibrate when you when while it rings, I'm gonna turn that off. I don't generally like to do that, but of course you want it to vibrate on silent. Um, so uh, now you'll have your own customized uh, vibration. Um, another tip I had I found here was uh, uh, undo email with a, with a shake. And a lot of people get frustrated when they're when they're actually going in and they try to create an email. Or I'm going to actually re reply to one here, and I start typing, and I'm like, oh, I didn't mean that. Well, what you can do is I'm going to show on the camera here. I can shake the phone, and the, the undo typing box comes up, and I can click undo typing. Look what it does. It removes the misspelled word and untypes. Very simple, easy way to uh, go in and, and, and do that again. Let me do that again and show you. Uh, type in the word. I don't like it. I shake the phone. Click undo. Real quick, easy way to, to be able to remove any misspellings without you having to actually erase it out. thought that was a pretty good tip here. Okay. Another another uh, tip that was out there I, I've used before is uh, using your flashlight for alerts. Now some people may not may, may not be able to hear very well and may want something like a, a flashlight to flash up uh, for alerts. And uh, for for those you like to do that, uh, there's a way to do that. So if I go into settings here, let me go back, and you have to go into accessibility. Let me find that uh, under general. Excuse me and accessibility and then the sh scroll down we should find LED for flash alerts so here it is right here if I turn this on anytime there's an alert that comes up whether it be uh, a notification a message the light will flash on and off if you have your phone on instead so the flash that will actually shine on and off um, without any problem there I turn that off of course um, let me move on to a couple Safari tips. Now, one cool thing is in Safari is it has it has a uh, place to I'll make sure I don't have any bad uh, websites here. Uh, a place to uh, never miss a link to to to, to folks that uh, tweet things out. If you follow, uh, some of you may use Twitter. Twitter, the social network. Um, the way I got to this is I opened up Safari, and if you see this little book down here, this is your bookmarks area, and I'm going to review a lot of this stuff here. You click the bookmarks uh, button here, and tap this little A right here. 
Now you can actually look at shared. Uh, what it does is it and instead of you going through Twitter and having to look through everything on Twitter, um, what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to uh, search through and, and show where their links are and relates to what, whoever you're following. Like this is a website I follow, the Next Web. If I tap it, it actually is bringing me back to their website right from the right from the browser, me and not me having to go all the way out to Twitter to find this. So it's kind of a neat thing if you follow folks on Twitter and you see this whole list of things I have, a lot of people that I'm following, like here's the Toronto Star. If I tap it, it's going to bring me right to that site. Quick, easy. Um, and it makes it makes it real simple. And this, what it does, like I said, what this does is it, it narrows it down as far as any uh, links in uh, Twitter. That was kind of a neat feature. Um, while we're in uh, Safari, Safari here, I will kind of review some of the things that you see in uh, bookmarks. This is where you get to bookmarks. Let me go back here and show you here a second. Now, before I go to bookmarks, let me show you one thing. You tap this little button right here. That's the, uh, the, the, the tabs window. If I tap it, it's going to show all the, all the windows that I have open. But look at this. I've scrolled up here, and it also remember it also will tell me any shortcuts or any any websites that were opened from my iPad or my Mac. So if I wanted to tap, let's say this is my Mac, I tap this. That's a that was a book that was a um, website that I had just visited not too long ago on my Mac, and now I'm able to access it from my iPhone or my or your iPad or your iPad for that matter. And th there they are here. And here's another link from my iPad I was looking at. I can tap this, and it brings up another web page and opens it up. That's that's a pretty uh, nifty feature um, as far as that goes. Uh, let's uh, go back into shortcuts here uh, and the bookmarks. Uh, this is the, the bookmarks list, and this shows all the bookmarks that you have that you've booked up, that you've hooked up on here. Um, the reading list, this is a reading list. Uh, way you can do is you can add, uh, you can add, websites to this reading list and it actually will bring up sites that you can go back to and look at. And then of course there, there's, there's where there's the Twitter uh, feed was. Um, another thing you can do from, from Safari and you can do this from any, any website that is, I was going to show this uh, as well as you tap this button here and that's, this gives you access to being able to send things. Like if I want to send this link to somebody and let's say I wanted to text message this link, I can just tap that arrow and it brings the link right into the into the uh, into the message, and then they'll be able to get that link right from that icon. Let me go back there and do that again. This also has other access here as well. Let's say you wanted to tweet this out. If I tap in the, the Twitter link, it's gonna I could tell tell you what it is, and it'll actually tweet it out. Same thing if you use Facebook. You tap Facebook, it'll you give the description, and then it sends the link right out to Facebook. Other things you can do from this this arrow and this this applies to a lot of other apps too you could bookmark this here's where you add it to the reading list so let's say I want to read this later I tap this and now if I go into my bookmarks and go into into the read list there there is the the item for uh, and also will save it up for offline reading too which is really cool that's what the other thing that uh, that the reading list does um, so it gives you that option if there was if there was a website you wanted to actually add to your home screen you could tap that and it would add, and I'll go ahead and do it. And it just, you just, it just names it. You can name it whatever you want. I click add. And what it does is if it was an important enough article you want to keep going to, it's right on my home screen. And I can tap, tap it, and it brings me back right back up in Safari. Um, other features that are, that are out there. Um, I can copy, and I also could print. If I had, like I have wireless printing in my uh, setup right now. So if I tap this and I want to select the printer that's on my network, there's my printer. I can actually tell it to uh, to print out to my printer right from here. And if I tap print, it's gonna. Uh, it, I can set it for one copy and double sided. I'll, I'll go ahead and do that and show that. You can see how it works. And my printer behind me here is actually gonna get that print job, and away you go. So definitely, you'd like to have um, have a printer that uh, that has wireless capabilities. I tell you, it's 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 quite a it's quite a difference here. I'm like I'm out of paper. Um, so uh, it, it is a great feature. So this this uh, this is a great place to do a lot of things right from there, um, and uh, and and it's pretty powerful. 
All right. Let's move on to a different topic. We're going to talk about keyboards. Now, the keyboards that are out there, um, the way you access your keyboards is if you go into settings and then you go into, uh, you scroll down in, in the general, you scroll on the keyboard. Now, here's some of the access to some of the, uh, the functionality of keyboards. So, and you can turn a lot of these things off. Some people don't like autocorrect or auto capitalization. If you want to check spelling, um, all these things could be turned off. But also what you're able to do is you're actually able to uh, uh, add keyboards. Now, obviously English would be the, probably the primary keyboard that you'd be using. Um, but there's also another key keyboard called emoji or the emoji cons. If you don't have it added, you can go in here and click add keyboard and it shows it listed. Of course, it won't be listed here because I've already got it installed, but it will be listed here as adding a keyboard. Like I say, let's say I want to add a Spanish keyboard. I can do that by tapping Spanish and then it'll have, it'll actually let you customize the way the software lays it out and that will give you an alternate keyboard. So now when you go in and type anything, then especially if you're like, if you're typing in, um, in, in email on this keyboard here, you see this little icon that looks like a world. It shows which keyboards I have accessibility to. Uh, I'll try that again. And this is the emoji cons. And these these emoji cons are pretty have some pretty cool stuff that they could come over. Of course, the recipient has to be able to see these too. So sometimes if you do send these, um, it will uh, it will change that. Now you see here how it says uh, it, it's put it in Spanish. So that's basically what it does when you have a different language. The keyboard is set to Spanish because I set it to default. So let's go back and I hope not want it to be in Spanish. I'd be in trouble here. Um, and to remove the keyboard, you swipe to the left and this tap delete. But the one keyboard I always recommend to add is the emoji because those are kind of fun um, to add. And as far as uh, as far as doing that, now another feature that I that I really like is is the shortcuts. Um, if you notice here at the bottom again, I'm back in. Um, let me back out here just so you see where I'm at. So I went into settings, and I went into general, and I went into uh, Keyboards, and if you notice here, there's a there's a shortcut. So if I were to type in the letters O M O M W, that would come up as on my way. Now what you can do here is also add your own shortcuts, and you can add tons of shortcuts and call them any way you want it. So I'm going to add in the Northwest of Us for my group. Type in that. I can call this NWOU. Click save. So now you see the shortcuts OMW and NWOU. So now if I go into an email, I want to I want to create a new email account or email. I can type go down to the uh, body of the message. If I type in NWOU, and space, look at that. It's got automatic stuff. And I do OMW. That brought up too. So these are great quick ways of having lots of phrases that you that you actually go through and uh, talk about as far as uh, different different messages you can do in there with quick shortcuts. So it's a really really neat thing, and you can add tons of these, and you can continue to add you know, any phrase you want in here. There's things that you do that you send out commonly that would be great, um, and I think that would be a good idea to to give that a shot if you had uh, if you had anything going on. All right, Roger. Um, do you want to? Uh, let's grab a couple of questions while while we're uh, on a break here. Okay, Dave. Uh, Judy Eber asked, uh, "How to stop an app I've tapped that keeps playing in the background?" Okay. And she used the the example of uh, Pandora is playing in the background while she's trying to do other things. Yep. So she wants to stop that particular app. Now let's try it. Pandora, we'll go ahead and play it. Um, and uh, let's see. So Pandora is playing right now. Now, you can control Pandora through the control center. So if I wanted to stop it, start it, you can control from here real quickly just by grabbing it from here. Um, 
you also, uh, as I talked about previous, you can double tap the home button. And there's Pandora as the app that's open. I can just drag up and it, it, it closes the app. So that should answer the question. Okay, excellent. Uh, Susan asked several questions, so I'm just going to unmute her and uh, she can ask those uh, questions that she had. She has quite a list here. So. All right, cool. Go ahead, Susan. Okay. Um, first question, is there some way to, to um, zoom out during when, when using Apple Maps during navigation? It will show me either the next few yards, you know, like, like if, to the next corner, if the corner is close, or the entire overview. But sometimes I like to see roughly where I'm heading, and I can't pinch or spread to make it uh, increase. My old Android phone did that just fine. Of course, I can always try putting Google Maps on. but Well, you know what? Google Maps is a very good app on here. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, Apple Maps has is, 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 is gotten a lot better. Um, if I just opened Maps now, and I'm... I'm zooming. I can pinch and spread, but not during navigation. Not when I've asked for directions oh, okay. and it's telling me how yeah, to go. You can't, at least not that I know of currently. Okay. Um, second question. The sound level on my uh, for the phone app is really very low. I can barely hear it ring when it's in my pocketbook, which is hanging by my side. And when I talk into the mic, if I don't have the mic right up against my mouth, nobody can hear me. I've turned up the sound to the maximum in settings. I push the ringer button till it shows all the way up, and it's still pretty quiet a ringer. Anything else I can do? Is that your experience? No. You're talking about your ringer when, when it rings? When it rings, it's really quiet. Well, not totally quiet, but if I'm not right next to it, I don't hear it. Again, my old phone, even when not turned all the way up, I could hear it when it was in the next room. Well, if you see, well, it just went off because I'm, let me see if it'll go back here. Um, It'll come off, but if you see right here, I'm in settings and sounds. Did you yeah. turn this up all the way? All the way. Right. When I actually play music, it's okay. It's it, it never gets really loud, so that it, loud enough to damage one's hearing, but it's certainly adequate when I've turned everything up all the way for music. But the actual ringer on the phone, which is the thing I want to hear, is not very loud. And as I say, when I have the the phone sitting by on the side by, by my side when when I'm uh, when I'm doing something else with my hands, people can't hear me talk on it. Well, let me take a look here. There are some things in the in accessibility that might help, but if it's really sound low, and I, that doesn't make sense to me that it would be um, real faint. And I'm not sure why I would be doing that. that that's very strange. Okay, and let's see. Um, one more question, and this, again, was something my old um, Android phone did fine, and so does my iPad, for that matter. Yep. And that is when I turn the phone upside down, the screen doesn't rotate 180 degrees. And if I want to charge it and still put it in a stand, it won't work if I, unless I can turn it upside down. When you say turn upside down, you mean the screen? So, so that the home button's up at the top. The, the which buttons? The home button. It's a, and, the, and the side of the phone where you plug the charger in. I would like to keep, when I have this in a stand so that it's vertical, mm -hmm. I'd like to be able to put that at the top. When I'm charging it. Okay. I Otherwise, mean, I have to lie it flat. You also could turn on the uh, the orientation, like like it is in, in this. It, it goes in the goes into landscape. It will do that for most of the websites, but it won't go 180 degrees. It'll only go 90, and I'm not sure it'll go 90 both right and left. Are you talking about when you're on a website? No, any screen, even the home screen. Yeah, it depends on the app. Like I, I actually, I just did it. Did you, did you see that? That's that's 90. What about 180? Okay. I'm turning it. Yeah. Now turn it once more in the same direction, yep, so sorry. that the home button is is shows at the top of the screen. Yeah. Sometimes that one doesn't work. Yeah. That that one doesn't work. It's, I've never gotten it to work. Yeah. I don't think that. It, it does oh. on the iPad, as I said, but. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so these are just annoyances. And I, and when you get to talking about ringtones, if you haven't already done so, I'd like to know how to add them. I haven't yet com connected my um, my phone to my computer. It's a new phone. And I presume that's what I'll have to do. But I'd like to know how to add my own ringtones, not buy them from the store. Yeah. So when you get around to that part of it. Yeah, that one I wasn't going to plan on covering today. If you want to add ringtones manually, there are many websites out there you could you could take advantage of. Um, 
but I wasn't. I gonna... created my own, and I can I just put them on through iTunes? Yeah, you have can to. Can I put them, put them into iTunes. ringtones? Right. Mm -hmm. But can I do it through ring? Put get make them ringtones, not just add them as music. You would, you would need to have a special app to do that, or um, um, there like I said, there's other websites that make those songs into ringtones. But I okay. wasn't yeah, planning. Just, the... Wasn't planning on covering that today. Okay. So okay. I won't take more time. Thank you. All right. Okay. A few more questions, Dave. Sure. Go ahead. Um, Judy asked, how to use the personal hotspot? How to use the personal hotspot? Okay. All right. Without sharing my my password here, <laughs> I guess I don't know if people are going to look that closely to it. Um, what you basically have to do is to get your personal hotspot turned on is you, is you turn on by ag actually going and tapping this button. And when you uh, when you turn it on, and when somebody connects, see if I can. It'll allow me to do it. I mean, let me uh, grab my iPad here, and I'll show you how to how we're connected. In the iPad or any other device, you would actually connect to it through the. It'd be just like connecting through Wi-Fi. Let me see if it picks it up. Yeah, it does. Good. Um, of course, it doesn't have a password. So basically, what you would have to do is turn the personal hotspot on. You have to give the people that password, and um, of course, you could change that password, which I'm going to. <laughs> um, and here's here's all the explanation at the bottom of the screen here, showing you uh, how to connect. You can connect via Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or USB. Um, the most the, the easiest one is using it via Wi-Fi, and, and like I said, it picks up the Wi-Fi signal actually let's so that in essence really is how you do the personal hotspot okay great okay i'm gonna uh, here's a question i'm sorry go ahead yeah go ahead one more Here, here's a question from uh roberta mm -hmm. uh how can i create groups if apps are on different screens ah good question so basically what you have to do with when you're creating apps on multiple screens let's say uh, we have one over here, and I want to grab it here. Um, I, I tap and hold, of course, the wiggle, and you drag it to the very edge. You use your finger. It's tricky. You can see how it went over, and you didn't see it because my screens aren't moving. Hold on. <laughs> I mean, that going into networks would have screwed that up. Sorry about that. Hold on. I'm mirroring back on. There we go. Now you can see it. <laughs> Um, so let me do that again. What I, what you do is you, you, let's say I'm on, this is, this is my, th my third page. I want to grab an app and I want to move it over. So I tap and hold until it wiggles, drag it over to the edge, and then, then you can bring it right over to the icon and then press the home button. Simple as that. All right. I'm going to move on the. So the can, I, can we have one more question, Dave? Okay, sure. Um, Marianne asked a, a couple of questions, and I wanted to just unmute her for a second and let her answer her ask uh, a couple questions she had. You got it. Hi, Roberta. This okay. Is Marianne. Uh, under um, accessibility, yes. does reduced motion act the same way it does in a camera? In other words, to make the camera more steady. No, it doesn't. It's reduced motion has to do with the background. Uh, I was going to actually be one of the tips I talk about, so I will review that uh, in, a, in a little bit here. But okay, my other question goes back to at the very beginning when you were showing the scrolling and how your um, uh, the, the the information on this the sports news and things came on. How did you set it so that those were whatever you wanted to have show in that um, notification or I'm going to go over that too. <laughs> you got both of those questions. Let me actually let's let's talk about uh, uh, notifications. I had that towards the end of the session here. So, um, all right, well, I'll go ahead and do that now. So, as far as uh, go ahead, all right, I'll go ahead and uh, mute her, uh, Roger, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll carry on here. A um, couple places that I look in here, and I went here. What I did is I went into settings here, and um, Go into the notification center, 
And this is a place where you can set what you want to see in the notification center. And here's the notifications view, today view, all kinds of settings you could turn on and off. And you can uh, set the notifications view by setting it manually, or you can set it by time. Now, when you go down to here, this is where you turn things on for notifications to show up. Now, it's all based on the particular app, depending on uh, what, what you want to be notified of. Like in the case of the Sports Center I use for ESPN, I have it set to uh, notify me about like what's going with the Blackhawks game. When the Blackhawks are playing, I have it set so every time a game comes on, it'll tell me uh, when they score, what's the end of the period, all that stuff. That's a little extreme. But you can go and actually set these, uh, set each one of these apps any way you'd like. Like here's the phone, let's say. Uh, right now it's set for alerts. So anytime an alert comes up relating to the phone, it's going to sh show up. And this is consistent across any, any devices. If you want it to be, uh, the alert style to be set to none, then you won't see anything. If you want it to be a banner, which would be the very top, very top of the uh, display, then it would be a banner. Or an alert, which would be a square box. You have the choice of that. Same thing uh, as far as control of the, the, the badge icon, the uh, alert sound. If you want sounds, you can turn it on. Um, and show in the you, you have control of showing it in the notification center. The cool thing is you have individual access to any of these apps and be able to change what it does. Um, so let's say, let's see if I see that. Like here's the Chicago Blackhawks. I have it set or it's sending me banners. Um, but I could set it to have alerts or, or none. So each time you want one of these, like I, all these items, I, I allow for it to be notified. Like here's uh, the sports center. I only set it for banners because it, you know, so, sometimes it drives you crazy to have sounds and all this stuff. I uh, and if there, if, if there are apps I don't like, if you scroll to the very bottom here, yeah, I have a lot of apps. So here's all apps I don't want me to be notified because they you know, become a nuisance. So I just tell it to, to, to do not include. Um, if you want to add it back, you can go in and turn all these things back on. So that's as far as specifics to the notification center. Um, and that's where all these things at the very top here will appear once uh, once you do that. So that's notifications there. Um, for those of you who have the 5S, and 47% of you do, I'm going to uh, want to talk about the, uh, the, the great feature called Touch ID. Um, there's a, 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 a little known feature as far as the secrets of that, um, as far as getting into the Touch ID uh, and being able to register your pictures and also register your finger, I should say, and, and also being able to go in and uh, adding others. So let me go in there and go in and get to this. And the way you get to this is I'm under settings, um, and then you want to go into general, and then you scroll down. Now, of course, unfortunately, for those of you who don't have the 5S, you won't see this. And here's touch ID and passcode. So I'm going to go in and type the passcode. So here's where I have control of what the passcode does as far as security goes. Now here's touch ID. If you tap this, so now you can use this. And what I love about the touch ID is not only can you use it for unlocking your iPhone uh, when it's locked, but you also can set it to the iTunes and App Store so you can use your fingerprint and actually make a purchase. Because if anybody knows, it's such a nuisance to have to continue to type in your, uh, your password each time. Now I've got a couple of registered fingerprints here already. So what I want to do is this is a this is a secret trick though, so I'd like to, you to be aware of it. So I'm gonna tap um, I'm gonna tap using my left thumb. And as soon as it senses, see I'm using my left thumb right now. Did you notice that the the gray button came up? What that does is it, it actually gives it, it actually will fine tune uh, this the recognition of your fingerprint. And you can do this on each on each one of your fingers here. So if I use my right index, see how it picks up? And I use my right thumb. It picks up. So what this does is it actually is it, it's making it learn even further uh, than it does. And what I'll do is I'll actually I'll add another fingerprint and I'll go through it. So I'm doing my left index finger. So as it's, as you see on the screen here, it's I have to lift and rest my finger repeatedly on the home button. Yeah, it's saying move move my phone finger as I lift so it kind of senses things. So it's telling me to adjust my grip. And keep doing it. So it recognizes my finger. Keep doing it. And it's complete. 
Now, as you see, it's it named it finger four. I'm like, I don't know what that is. Um, what you can do is at the very top of the screen here, you type edit. So now I can name it. So I'll go this, I'll call this, this is my left index. So I've named it, I tap done. And you, this is also the way you want, if you ever want to remove fingers. Now, one cool thing too, is if you, if you want your spouse or a friend or anybody who wants to have access to it using their fingers, you can add their fingers as well. So it's not limited to just, um, just your fingers. It's limited to uh, anybody you'd like. Now, well, let's see if it actually senses my left index. And there it is. So I can continue on each time and actually fine tune it. So I recommend for those of you who use this Touch ID um, to do that once in a while if you notice that it's it's giving you a struggle to be able to unlock the phone uh, when you use it. So that's the Touch ID. See what else we got here. Okay, the calculator. I know everybody uses a calculator, right? Um, what we do is, uh, easy way to get to the calculator is by uh, uh, bringing up the control center and going in the calculator. Did you know when you type in numbers, you can actually use your thumb or finger and swipe across the number to erase the number? I don't think too many people probably knew that. So what I'm doing is, so I can show you on the camera here, I'm swiping the number. So it actually erases it. And of course, it'll work the same way if you use the, the big calculator. It erases the numbers out. It's pretty slick. That was a, the calculators. Um, there's also a, a service on here called FaceTime. And I'm sure many of you have used FaceTime before. And did you know that you actually can make FaceTime phone calls um, audio uh, instead of video? So if you go to a contact, you actually can make a phone call and use it as an audio call as opposed to a video call. Um, first off, that saves you any minutes if, you, if you're on a, on a restricted minutes plan on your cell phone, uh, as well as the, the audio quality is absolutely incredible. As you, as you hear today, like we're doing with this go to meeting, the audio quality on folks that have been talking to me today um, is very good. And this is, this is very cool, uh, the fact that it sounds so good. So I recommend, if you at all possible, to use FaceTime. Obviously, you're calling from one, one iPhone to another, as well as uh, iPad. You can make audio voice calls using FaceTime. Um, okay. We talked about... Uh, during our announcement, and shoot, I hope I left it open. I did. What I want to do is I want to play a video, and this was a video we have found um, on how to uh, tangle proof your earbuds. And I wanted you to see that real quick. Take a look here. How do you carry earbuds around so they don't get tangled but are still easy to access? You can buy cord wrangling gizmos, but they add bulk and are easy to lose. The best solution I found is this super geeky, no extra gear required cord wrapping technique. Step one. Take your earphones and hold the earbuds in your right hand and the cord where it comes together in your left. Step two, you want to twist the cord forward with your left fingers like that and it'll make it form a natural coil which you grab with your right hand. Step three, you do the same thing in reverse. You roll the cord back and you grab it. You repeat step two going forward and step three going back. When you have a few inches left in your cord, you finish off step four by just wrapping the cord through the coil a few times. And that's going to give you a nice tight coil. If you undo it, the great thing about this is it comes out, no tangles, no knots. Okay, that was a, I uh, thought that was a great tip. It was a lot of times we get those earbuds, they're, 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 they get tangled. They're, they're, in a, they're stuck in your purse, throw them in your bag. What a, a great tip at uh, knowing how to do that. I will include that link um, in our notes uh, so people can watch that video again if it's hard to see, uh, but I think it was a great tip. All right, let me go back to the phone and talk about, we just talked about um, closing apps. I'm gonna kind of discuss that a little bit. Uh, I tend to recommend closing apps whenever possible. I know Apple's take on it is, it isn't a big deal that you have, uh, have the app open, um, but 
after time, a lot of these apps build up in memory. So one trick I wanted to show you is, let's say you have three apps open here at once here. What you can do is you can take three fingers, grab them, all three of them, and all three of them will close at once. Pretty, cl pretty cool. Let me do that again. So if I, t if I have three apps visible, I take three fingers, grab all three, and they, and they close up. And if you decide you want to close out other apps, I, I, I recommend it from time to time. It isn't a bad idea to, to clear out things that are, that are built up. You know, I've got probably quite a bit of, of items that are running in the background. Um, it isn't critical that you do this. It, uh, like I said, Apple's take on this, it doesn't really affect um, memory. But to me, it, after time, it, it does kind of book things up when it relates to, to closing these out uh, uh, and doing that. So that's that's the uh, multitask view as well as closing out apps. Close up here. Bear with me. Okay. Now we talked about. Someone asked me a question earlier about uh, the parallax, and which is the reduced motion which doesn't, uh, doesn't help you with the camera, unfortunately. I wish it did, but um, but some folks don't like, I mean, it was, it was the first thing that a lot of people had talked about. If you, if, you, if you have the reduced motion, if you notice on the background of my my phone, if I move it and you see it on your phone, especially on the 5S, you will see that you see the bubbles kind of moving around. If you want to reduce the motion to that, um, and the way you can do that is you can turn off parallax. To do that, you go under settings, um, under general, and then go into accessibility, and then you can uh, turn off reduced motion. And what this does is it reduces the motion of the user interface, uh, user interface, including the parallax effect of icons and alerts. So some folks got a little little motion sickness with that. So it's a good tip to have um, as far as turning that off. Now. This was a kind of an interesting uh, tip I found. How to display your iPhone signal strength in numbers as opposed to uh, as opposed to a uh, uh, dots. And this trick is is kind of geeky, but I thought it was worth kind of showing. The way you do this is you actually go into your phone and you dial three zero zero one pound one two three four five pound star and call. And looks like it might take me offline here. That didn't work. Let me try it again here. Oh, I forgot the star. Star three zero zero one pound one two three four five pound star. Oh, this brings us into a thing called a field test. Now you notice up at the top here. Now what it did is it actually put the uh, single strength into a number. Now, 120 is the absolute best. Anything uh, below 80 is not so good. So I have a pretty good I have pretty good coverage here. So if you wanted to get real geeky and look at some of the information here, that that was kind of a cool tip. So as soon as I turn it off, notice that you can save this if you want, but not a big deal. Um, you can uh, there's a couple buttons you could push, but I just if you wanted to see what your signal strength is, that's probably a quick way of doing it. Not a crazy, not an important tip, but kind of an interesting tip. Um, one thing I did do some searches and emails earlier. Um, if I type in a word for some reason, or not for some reason, I'm typing in the word to search for something. If you if you see if you see uh, the word, it actually brings it, it points it out in every spot it does in email. Let me try this again. See, I, I typed in Google. Now, in this case, the word Google shows up in the title, uh, in the uh, actual email address. Uh, what this is uh, actually doing is uh, because of that word. But you could type in other words like, uh, let's type in North. And you notice some some emails, not only does it bring it from the, the this particular one, of course, the Northwest of Us is, uh, is the fr in the from icon, but it also brings it out in the body of the message. So it actually shows everything in there. Um, which is pretty cool. Now, 
when you open up an email, there is a there's a feature called flagged, and I think it's a, it's got a lot of great things here. So what I did was I opened up an email. I'm looking at an email. I'm reading it. Now I decide I want to flag this for for a future review. So what you can do is you can do a number of a uh, couple things here. You, this is a place you can flag it. So what it'll do is it'll put a flag, and it, it sorts it in the flags uh, mailbox. You can mark it as unread. Also, what a cool thing they've added here is if I wanted to move this to junk, if I tap move to junk, this email will actually uh, go into our, my junk filter and it'll hopefully f filter it for other future ones if, if it is to actual junk. In this case, I want to type for, click flag. So what I want to do is if you if you noticed, it's now got an orange dot here. That means it shows you in the email that I, I actually flagged it. But also you can set up flagged emails and 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 it brings it into one centralized box, uh, and this gives you the opportunity to be able to sort different emails in a flagged folder, which is pretty cool. Now, talking about email, if I wanted to actually customize email, and I have quite a few email addresses I check, but some of you may only have a couple, but you could tap the edit uh, button here at the very top, and you notice that you have controls as, as far as what. Um, boxes you want to see as well as being able to resort them. I like I like to say if I want to sort, resort them so this one shows at the top and this one shows at the bottom, I can move these as you see. I grab these little lines and each one of these is moving to whichever one I want. So I may actually reorder any mailboxes I want. You also could put in the all mailboxes in here. I, I choose to turn that off. There's a couple other features in here you can put in here. If you want to have a sort a particular box just for attachments. If someone touches attachments, instead of having to sort it, you now can sort it um, that way. Um, same thing with flagged for unread. Now there's another feature called VIP. You can add, uh, make folks that you get emails from all the time and set them as a VIP. Um, that gives you that option. Um, all drafts, all sent, all, all these are, are customizable to add them to your view. Once I click done, this is actually what my view is because I didn't choose to put a lot of those things in there, but you can add those. And below here, this is actually the actual account itself, because uh, what what the mailbox app does is it, it gives you just your emails, as well as giving you full access to um, your entire mailbox. Like in this case, this is a Gmail mailbox I have. So you see how it has all the Gmail folders accessible. So this is the actual account mailbox. As you see, it says accounts, and then up here is just the place you always go to search and read your emails right from here. Um, so that's some of the customizations that you can uh, uh, that you can do. Another thing I, I found pretty cool is if you go into a message and let's say you want to reply to somebody, but you don't want to when you reply to somebody, you know, you know always when you click reply, click reply, and close it, but then close the entire message. And a lot of times you don't want to see it. Maybe there's a there's a specific um, let me cancel this. Maybe there's a specific point of the email that you want to respond to. Um, so what you can do is you actually can tap a part of the email, highlight what you want, and once you've highlighted, you click reply. Click reply, and look what happens. Only thing that's in the body of the message is the actual um, piece of the message that you wanted to point out when you reply. Let me do that again so you can see it. So I'm in a mail email message. I want to reply to somebody. I tap on the display. Hold on and then grab whatever text I want to include. I click the reply button and voila, it only has the text that's in, that you want to point out. Pretty cool. Roger, do we have any other questions? Yes, we do. All right. Mary Ann asked, what are badges? Badges. Oh, that's part of Game Center. Once you play games, it's not important. <laughs> Okay. And uh, Sandy asked if, um, how do you print from an iPhone? And uh, some people have a wireless network yep. and maybe not the appropriate type of printer that allows you to print from an iPhone. So maybe you could explain that. Sure. Um, I have a printer. It's the Epson Workforce 3540. I believe Roger owns one as well. Absolutely awesome printer. It's wireless. It's set up on your wireless network. It is uh, air print capable. If you don't have an air print capable printer, um, 
it usually they have the printers that were made within the last, I'd say, two to three years are, should have that capability. If you don't, there is some third-party programs uh, out there uh, on your, uh, that you can use on your Mac. Um, I can show that to you. I believe it's called Printopia. Let's see if I have it yet. Here it is. This, this is a this is an application I believe is around twenty dollars and allows you to share out your printer using your Mac as opposed to using um, as opposed if you don't if you don't have a printer that's uh, directly capable of printing to it. Um, let me show you on the on the um, on the iPhone. So if I were to go to want to uh, to, to print. If you notice here when I click select printer, my recent printers is because it's a printer that I that I that does work directly. If I if I wanted to print via Printopia, notice notice this here, it's a lightning bolt. Uh, all these are Printopia apps. Printopia also allows you to send a print job directly to Dropbox. Um, you can print directly to the printer. You also can use send it to your Mac, or if you use Evernote, you can actually send it to there as well. So this is a you know this is kind of an advanced feature that you wouldn't get. From just printing normally through just a printer if you wanted just a hard copy so it's called printopia i believe it's around twenty dollars it's made by a company called ecam e-c-a-m-m -M, and you can install it on your mac and your mac becomes a print server anything else Ryder? there's one other uh clarification that somebody asked for and, and okay. that's about the badges uh indicating that the red circles uh are the badges that people are referring to um, for example, on your home screen, you have an indication that. You oh, have some I thought mail. she was talking about the other badges. Gotcha. So yeah. you mean like the like I have a where it says it shows yes. the phone has a one. What was her question about it? Well, uh, they were just asking for clarification as to the badges and and the red circles were really what they were meaning to uh, ask about. These here just were asking what they are and. Well, of and, course, uh, if you the, get a phone call that you missed, it's going to show the number one. Same emails, it shows you how many emails you have waiting for you. If you have any applications, like in this case, I have an app here that had a notification. Um, the Yahoo News Digest is telling me that, that I have something to take a look at. So what those badges do is basically identify that there's something that the, the application um, has that it wants to, um, to notify you of. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now a couple other questions coming in. Sure. Uh, Ju um, let's see. Jennifer asked, I want to send an email to a group in my contacts. I can't get my iPad or iPhone to send to the whole group like it will on my Mac. Is there a way? Yeah, distribution lists are pretty hard to work with when it comes to um, sending emails. When you click the two button, I mean, you can add any of your contacts, um, but do you have to actually create? I mean, I don't, I, I don't think you can do it on the phone. Is my answer. Okay. Um, Another question: um, Isn't Dropbox and Evernote also on the iPhone? Why would you send it to Dropbox and Evernote on this on the computer? Sometimes you might want to do it that way. That was a feature that was at, that app has been around for a while. Um, as technology has changed and evolved, generally you wouldn't need to have to do it, uh, but it does give you an option to do it. You're right. You are correct. Um, if you want to send things over um, to those services, you, you definitely could. Um, the other thing too is it might be a document like this. Like if it's an email, if I want to if I want to send this email and have it stored as a document, how would you do it? You, you know you click forward and forward to somebody, but you can't actually manipulate it. So in this case, um, when you print it, it's actually going to send it over uh, to those services because the printer servers, don't, this doesn't give you that option um, any other way. At least I don't think so. Um, if you tap folders, no. Yeah, there's really no other way. So that, that would be primarily the reason to do it. Would you have to do that very often? Probably not. Okay, very good. All right. Um, we're heading close to the end here. We're about uh, 15 minutes. I'm going to give a couple more uh, tips that I, uh, that I have here. A um, couple things that people deal with uh, as far as troubleshooting. Um, yeah, switch back to full screen here. Where did I freeze? Yep. 
Okay. Perfect. Um, when you have Wi-Fi issues, a couple of tips I'll give you. Because a lot of times what happens is when you go into Wi-Fi, and I don't want to, I can't change it because it'll knock you off, not, it'll knock me off here, but um, you could turn the Wi-Fi on and off. That's always a good thing to do whenever you have a Wi-Fi problem. Just, just tap the button here and turn it on and off. I'm not going to do it because it'll, it'll cut me off here. Uh, the other thing to do too is if you have any networks that you've been to before that you've visited, you can tap this little eye here and it gives information about the network. What I tell, what I tell people, a lot of people to do is if you're having problems with that network connecting all the time, click, tap, forget this network. And what will happen is it'll take it out of your list and it'll, and it'll um, let, let me do one of the other ones here. So if I could, t if I tap this one, it's like this, this one I haven't joined before, so it wouldn't be in here. This one I have, um, and I can tap forget this network and then tap forget. And it won't be, it, it won't have any of the old settings that it's, that it's saved before. So now when I go to connect to that other network uh, in the future, I will have to put the password in and have to store it uh, for the first, for the first time. Now, if, if it comes a point where you have any drastic issues with Wi-Fi, what you can do is go into general, scroll all the way down to the button here called reset and tread, uh, the, proceed with caution whenever you go into this reset. You don't want to be tapping things here. Um, what reset does is this, this gives you a place to reset all your settings. That means if you're having a problem with your phone, you want to be able just to reset all the settings, reset the settings part of it to factory, but it won't set, it won't reset uh, all your apps and have you cause, cause you to have to reinstall everything. Um, erase all content settings. Of course, that's what you do if you're getting rid of the phone or if you want to do a complete erasure, don't do that. But the one I was going to point out here is reset network settings. Now, of course, it does put some protection in place, and again, I'm not going to do it. Um, when you push the reset network settings button, uh, it, it will reset just the network settings portion of it. So any Wi-Fi connection you've made before, anything you've connected to before will be erased and gone, and you'll have to join it again. I recommend doing that if, it all, if all else fails and you continue to have issues connecting to, to, uh, uh, to Wi-Fi. Um, as far as uh, as far as that goes, um, another thing I wanted to talk about too was uh, cellular issues. Find my note here. Yes. A lot of times, if you know, you'll always notice when you have your cell phone, and and up here we're in good shape because I have a good signal strength indicator. It's, it shows my carrier, but I'm sure you've seen a lot of times where this disappears. As I talked about earlier, it could drop to 4G or the edge network. It could be where you are as far as the cell tower goes. Um, and one of the things you can do is uh, tapping the airplane mode on and off. Well, what it'll do is, and, I, and of course, when you go to airplane mode, this, that's this here. I'm not going to do it. Um, but when you tap the airplane mode on, wait a few seconds, and then tap it back on, uh, off, what it's going to do is reset your connection uh, to the cellular network. And that will give uh, you the option to uh, reset the cell tower. Because a lot of times you get to the point maybe the cell tower is bad, you have some issues. That's one tip I actually recommend as far as uh, that goes. A couple other tips I was going to give you on uh, uh, when, when you're away and you don't think you're going to be able to charge your phone uh, right away, a couple things I recommend as far as ba uh, battery uh, saving while you're using the phone. Turn off Bluetooth. That's always the number one thing. I, I tend to try to turn Bluetooth off when all possible. I know a lot of us have our, our sync phones. Well, now we have to because of the new law. We have to have hands-free. Um, so the Bluetooth does need to be on to connect to those devices. But if you're not going to be near those Bluetooth devices for a period of time, good idea to turn that off. The other thing I recommend is turning Wi-Fi off. If you're going to just be on cellular, turn Wi-Fi off because that's another place where it constantly is um, uh, causing uh, issues with your battery. Um, and then last but not least is dim, dim your, dim your uh, display, dim it as much as you can so you can, so you can see it, but, uh, the dimmer it is, the less battery life it's going to use. Um, so that's an, another cool thing. Another tip I was going to get, uh, show you was, let's see what we got here. Go let's say, uh, you get a phone call and the phone number comes in. If that phone number comes in and um, allows you to, it's like a, it's someone that keeps bugging you all the time. So you go. What you can do is you actually can create a contact for that particular number. 
this applies to any contact. So in this case, let's say I don't want to 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 I don't want to be able to get calls from this person anymore. If you notice here at the very bottom, I went into contacts. Let me go back here, and you can scroll back down here and tap block caller. And what this does is this is going to block the contact from ever being able to call you. Puts it on your block list. Uh, same thing with FaceTime. If it's a FaceTime number, it would block that too. It's a great tip. Um, so if you do get a number that's that that you don't know what the number is, add it to your contacts list and just say block call and then select that block call. Okay, with the remaining minutes we have left, Rod, do we have any other questions? We do have a few. Okay, great. Let's see, uh, Judy said that she was able to create groups in her contact list and have been able to send them with um, her okay. iPhone. I could be wrong. I do not re recall being able to do that. Because if you add a new contact, is, is Judy available on mic? We can have her. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me find her here. Judy, you're on, you're on with Dave. Hi, Judy. Okay. Can Can you hear me? I can. Yes, we can. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a group uh, in particular that I'm thinking of that I have in my contact list. And whether I'm using my computer, my iPhone, or my iPad, I am able to grab that uh, uh, list of that group of people only and send it. Um, I've never had a problem with that, so I'm a little surprised that you say it can't be done. So say that again. Go ahead and uh, repeat that. Um, I have a group that I set up in my contact list, just like you were talking about. Mm -hmm. So and you, created, you actually created a group. Yes. Okay. Let me try that. So did you create? You created a group here. Um. So this is all my contacts list here. How did you create the group? Whoa, uh, let's see. I think what I did was I might have created it in, I'm trying to remember, it's such a long time ago. Um, I, I think I created it in the email. I created it and kept it in my, yeah, in my contact list. Saved it. So you created an email. I created an email. Okay. And so whenever I want that particular group, I go into um, where it's located. And I've never had any problem with it. Yeah, just like what you're doing there. Okay. Now how do you save the group? Well, it's already it's already saved. Once you send it, it's already is that not true? It's already saved once you send it. Oh, from emails, yes. But you're, you're saying that you're uh, trying to save the, the actual group. So in context, you can't, there is no just well, it, it, it is, it is in the contact list. It's in my contact list when I, I, I don't, I don't know what that is that you're showing me. No, I'm in. The, I'm actually in email. Like I created an email draft. I created an email draft. Here, so, let me look. Because I don't. I don't recall this. Is there okay. Any? Well, we'll talk later then. Okay. Well, if I if I discover that, I'll add that to the to the to, to the effort. Okay. All right. Thank you. Judy, you also had a question about uh, resetting all of your apps. Yeah, um, I, I got this um, new iPhone in December, mm -hmm. and somehow I didn't get all of my apps. And I was wondering, everything else is working just fine, but I see sometimes I have to add an app that wasn't added. Can I erase all the apps and just put in all the previous apps um. from my old phone? That that would require a restore, so you wouldn't be able to do it that way. So I can't just do okay. Yeah. 
Okay, you, thank you. You. Can, you can go into apps and FX. I was actually going to talk about that. Um, when you go into uh, the App Store, the App Store actually shows um, when you go under updates. Now, one thing I didn't talk about was updates. Uh, you know, now updates are set to automatically update. Um, in most cases, you probably wouldn't ever want to turn that off because it's great because you don't have to ever think about it again. But when I went into updates there, there's also a link here called purchased. And this will show everything that's um, that was purchased, and if it's if it's um, if it's if it's not, uh, and this shows all my items that were purchased. You also can tap not on this iPhone, and this will show any apps that were pur purchased or free or, or otherwise, and then you can go back and download them. Uh, so this does give you the option to see what isn't on your on your phone. As far as oh, so as far as removing them goes, you'd have to do them manually. Or restore okay. your phone. Thank you. No Any other questions, Mr. Raj? Yes. Uh, Marcia asked, is there a setting to make app email links always open in the app versus Safari? For example, I get email invites from LinkedIn or suggested pins from Pinterest. When I click on the links, it mostly opens in Safari. Then sometimes Safari recognizes I have an app installed that offers for me to open it in the app versus logging in through Safari. Yes, I, I uh, you cannot do it because it's all dependent on the developer of the app. If the developer of the app created a hook that when you click a link, it will automatically um, go to that app, then yes, it would work. In the case of LinkedIn, when you click a link, um, it asks you, do you want to open this in the app um, or do you want to proceed to, to the website? So it really all is dependent on the, uh, the developer of the particular app. Because I'm almost positive when you click a link for LinkedIn, um, LinkedIn will, will, um, will come back and ask you that question. But it's all, de all dependent on the developer. Excellent. Uh, the last question. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, Ed Booth had some really good questions about using Dropbox and printing, and I'm just going to unmute him and let him ask those questions to you. Okay, great. Ed, are you, hey guys. Are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. I can. yeah. Okay. Um, the question I had is um, I've tried to, I have Dropbox app on my uh, iPhone 5S, and I followed uh, Dave's uh, on screen stuff to look for printers. When I came up, I didn't see the same. Uh, screen that he arrived at with uh, you know listing his various printers. It just says no uh, airport printers or no uh, airprint printers on my network, which is true. I don't have any. Uh, I, I guess what I was assuming was uh, if there would be some way that I could send, let's say I, uh, I got an email or I did some notes on my uh, notepad uh, app and then I wanted to send that to print, that I could send that through Dropbox somehow, um, and uh, maybe I have a faulty assumption, but that was basically what I was. Uh, yeah, I get that screen, Dave. Uh, when I say select printer, it just looks around and it comes back and it says no uh, air uh, print printers uh, found. Right, uh, right. I'm, I'm, I think it would would uh, Printopia uh, not only be an app that goes on my uh, my Mac, but uh, it, do they have also an app that somehow uh, parallel mates with that and goes on the uh, iPhone 5. No, unfortunately they don't. I mean, and uh, the uh, Printopia app is a Mac only app. Okay. Um, so how is it that you're seeing, is, is the, the fact that you can expand that screen out and you're seeing printers, multiple printers, uh, is that because you actually do have a, uh, that Epson printer? Yes. Yeah, the yes. other printer thing. The other yeah. printers is, is showing up as you see. Each one of them says Printopia at Printopia at because I, I my laptop is on the network and I have Printopia running. Okay, all right. So that 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 sounds good then. Uh, okay. If I get Printopia, put it on my Mac, mm -hmm. then it's likely that that will show up when I'm when I'm on the same Wi-Fi network. Yeah, basically Printopia is becoming a printer server. Printer server. Yeah. Is what happens. Okay, perfect. Uh, this is send to Dropbox on Mac, Printopia at, and then it's got your network. Uh, got my, 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 my. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So if I get Printopia downloaded, uh, there'll be instructions or there'll be a way to, to, to set that up then on my phone. Absolutely. Very simple. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. One last question and we'll call it, uh, we'll end the session here. I think we've covered them all. We did. Okay. Yeah. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. An hour and a half probably can't do it justice. There's probably a lot of tips I didn't have time to talk about today, but uh, maybe if, uh, if the group is uh, interested, we maybe maybe repeat this uh, session and come up with some uh, different topics uh, for the day. Uh, I want to thank Roger Matthews for uh, moderating the call for me. It made it a heck of a lot easier uh, to do this from what I did last time. And, uh, and I want to bid you a good good day. And, uh, and the recording will be available over the next couple of days. And uh, hopefully we're going to try to edit down for you and, uh, and have it ready to go. Thanks, everybody, and uh, have a great day. Thanks, Dave.